Hello, my name is Dan Salvato, and this is a level I made in Super Mario Maker called Dan's Puzzle Box. In this video, I will talk about principles of game design and how I followed them in the creation of this level. This level is a puzzle level, so I encourage you to try it yourself before watching this video. My goal with this level was to create three self-contained puzzles that each require the use of a unique element or game mechanic. The player should be able to easily identify the problem in front of them, preferably with all the puzzle elements within their field of view. The first puzzle is the simplest of the three. A seasoned Mario player will understand the objective in just a few seconds. Use the raccoon power up to fly to the exit. This is aided by the visual cue of the up arrow. However, there's no runway available except for a floor that causes Mario to take damage. From here, the player may start getting some ideas on how to tackle the puzzle, but notice the right side of the tunnel is off screen, which encourages the player to take a look instead of jumping straight to the puzzle. So they run down the tunnel to discover, what do you know, a dead end. However, the player is guaranteed to be able to safely make it back out of the tunnel, so the player was never in any true danger. But in the process of exploration, the player now understands that the tunnel is the correct way to pick up enough speed to fly. This is an example of unobtrusively nudging the player in the right direction. We demonstrate how to use an element of the puzzle by letting the player discover it themselves. On to the second puzzle. I place a falling platform here to make sure that the entire room stays in the player's field of view long enough that they know there's nothing important off screen. This time the exit is clearly in sight, but there are a few more things going on. In this puzzle, I use common associations in Mario to help the player understand their objective as well as the direction that needs to be taken. It's immediately obvious that the bullet bills are for gaining the height needed to reach the exit. However, the shots are staggered so that only the first bullet bill can be stomped. There's a little nook on the right side with a brick in it, which clearly requires the Koopa shell to break. The reason I set up a brick and Koopa shell was to make it obvious that Mario needs to go inside that nook. By blocking off the nook and asking the player to break the barrier, I'm establishing a non-arbitrary importance for Mario to be inside of there. Anyway, after breaking this block, there's some pressure because the bullet bills have fired and are threatening to trap the player. They will run into this newly opened nook as a convenient shelter from the bullet bill. This is a second nudge to help the player discover the purpose of the nook. If you haven't figured it out yourself yet, let's leave the nook and see what happens. The bullet bills are in a different synchronization now because the nook despawned one of them while keeping the other on screen. From here, it may take a little bit more experimentation, but the player should be able to work out the timing and get the bullet bills properly in sync. To avoid frustration, the timing is actually designed for Mario to leave the nook right after the bullet bill passes over his head. This helps take the arbitrary factor out of trying to get some super precise timing down, because that's not what this puzzle is about. Okay, we're finally on to the last puzzle, but this one takes the most steps. My goal was to slowly introduce each additional element to the player, so that they can tackle things one step at a time and not be immediately overwhelmed. Starting off, we see a fire flower behind these bricks. Okay, so we'll need a shell or a leaf power up to get that fire flower. That's clearly for later. So let's hit this block. Oh, a vine comes out. Well, we go up the vine to discover a mushroom, so we grab that. The only visible use of this mushroom is to hit this brick right here. When the player does this, they should gain an understanding that this puzzle is about growing the vine. The brick that previously stopped the vine is no longer an obstacle, so once the player decides to try resetting the room, they can hit the vine again and notice that it grows higher this time. I also attempt to symbolize this by putting the reset door directly beneath the vine. The rest of the puzzle is in view now. Even though the player doesn't know the exact moves yet, they more or less understand the sequence of the rest of the puzzle. There's your leaf, which gives you access to the fire flower. However, if the leaf was easy to get, then it might as well not be included. The player can watch the descent of the leaf, and notice that it can only be accessed in the mushroom area. I try to additionally cue this by creating a ceiling where the player can deliberately take damage in order to backtrack into there. Things are pretty straightforward from here. The fire flower helps us snipe the bob and break these blocks. Once again, we can grow the vine even higher. And that is the final step in completing this puzzle. The last obstacle is in place to ensure the player doesn't attempt to clear the level by taking damage across the spikes. The vine is required in order to keep the fire flower. 
Thanks for watching the tour of my puzzle level. Here are the design elements I went for, above all else. First, establish a set of expectations and stick to those throughout the level. I wanted to make the player feel safe enough to explore, as well as not introduce any obstacles for the purpose of being dangerous. The second expectation was that every single element of the level is useful for solving the puzzle. There are no extraneous platforms, blocks, or enemies whatsoever. Second, take advantage of the player's exploration to nudge them in the right direction. Try to take one of the actions they perform through exploration and incorporate it as part of the puzzle's solution. And third, try to focus each puzzle around a small number of base concepts. This allows you to increase the difficulty of the puzzle without forcing the player to overthink. If the base concepts of the puzzle are clear, then the player should have a good understanding of all the pieces after a small amount of exploration. The solution of the puzzle is in understanding the final piece of the base concept, which gives the player satisfaction of having discovered something new. This becomes more effective if the same base concept is used in variations for later puzzles. This isn't something that my level does, but in more expertly crafted lengthy puzzle games, you see this over and over again. The simple puzzles teach the player a new base concept in the game mechanics, and the concept is then used later on to create more advanced scenarios. It's a great way to make the player truly feel like they've mastered many things by the end of the game. That's it for today. I hope I get the chance to demonstrate or review some more levels in the future. And also, I really can't wait to see more and more neat concepts and awesome designs as designers like you master the art of Mario. Thanks for watching.